What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, finally saw the final episode of The Cape Crusader today. I had seen already the, the first nine episodes the day that it came out. Uh, but then I had to do something else. Uh, lots to say, Brian, about the show. Um, let's start by, I guess, talking about talking about the show and I guess the best parts and the things that we probably didn't like as much. Um, there wasn't too much that I didn't dislike. I guess I could say there was one aspect of it I didn't like too much, but nothing that really bothered me to the point where I, I had to stop watching. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. The Cape Crusader, Brian, what were your thoughts after seeing the, the season? I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I did think it was a little uneven and I... I think how you respond to this show probably depends somewhat in term, somewhat on where you set your personal bar for this show going in. I think if your bar is, this has to be better than the Batman the Animated Series, I think you will be disappointed. I don't think it is better than the original yet, because it's only 10 episodes of, season, of a first season. Exactly. But I don't think, if I think about the things I liked most about this season, I don't think they approached the high points of Batman the Animated Series. I don't think they got there. But I thought this show is a worthy successor, heir, I don't know what you want to call it. And I thought the season gained some steam as it went along. I, th I think my favorite episodes are predominantly in the back half of the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hope that bodes well for you know the future seasons. Bruce Tim said it's going to be a while before we see season two, but he said that he's hopeful that Amazon will order more seasons beyond just two. So they're prepping as if it's going to be sort of a longer, a longer run. But I think that's kind of where I come out. I, and I, uh, we can get into the discussion about sort of this seemingly new golden age of, of animation in, uh, in this genre. Um, I don't think this will top any of those rankings. I think it's, fun to watch. I think you should watch it. I think if you love the original series, you'll enjoy this. I don't think this is immortal yet. Yeah, I can agree with that sentiment. Although, Brian, I'd have to say I enjoyed this show uh, differently than I would say a Blue-Eyed Samurai or X-Men 97. Uh, I certainly, while I was watching, was looking for I guess the comparisons of the things that I saw previously in Batman the Animated Series in terms of the take of Batman, although it was different this time, and I and I quite enjoyed it too, Brian. I like the fresh take, Brian, um, of introducing characters and characters, Brian, that you thought would probably stick around for some time for, for, for later seasons, and they so happened to be not around anymore. And it was like, okay, this is TVMA. This is not, uh, you know, put you in jail and you're, you're rocking out for a little bit until you find a way to get back out there again. Brian, I think there's one aspect to this show which I love. And I'm going to say something and hopefully you do a, a Captain America and catch the reference. Dave Bridgerton this. And I'll say it, and I mean it by this way. In Bridgerton, you're taken to a time where a lot of the extra stuff that we focus on today don't really matter. With regard to the question that we had previously, Brian, with Commissioner Gordon, like how did he get this job, right, whatever. And they treated it like Bridgerton in that in this world, that does not exist. And I liked it because we got other problems than that. So I like the fact that they made us forget that, you know, even in a world where that doesn't exist, there are still bigger issues to solve. So I liked that approach, Brian. How did you feel about the level of that? I think some people, I think that's a, I think that's a debate um, that people will have with you about this show. I think people could, I think someone could say, oh, wait a second here. This is the 1940s. Certainly. And we're, we're treating, 
we're treating sort of the African-American cast members as if they're, it's a non-issue that they're sort of on par and, you know, there is no sort of racial question about their standing as lawyers, as police yes. officers. Yes. Um, you also have obviously a, uh, a, a lesbian relationship or pseudo relationship between Harley Quinzel and, um, and Montoya Barbara. and Renee Montoya. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, and that's kind of in public, right? They're yes. on a date. In yes. a restaurant, and so that's like a, another thing. Was like, okay, nineteen forties America. Like, if you're really trying to historically lens that, probably is, you know, that may not be as acceptable um, back then uh, as as it would be today. Certainly so, not. Yeah, you're right. I mean, th this show clearly made a very definitive choice not to explore any of those issues while modernizing the complexion of the cast and the relationships. It's a choice. I was like, yes. I think it will turn some people off. If I'm being quite honest, I think there are some people that love the original series that are going to say, "Why is this in here at all?" Mm -hmm. um, even if they don't talk about it, I think yeah. there's other people that probably will share your sentiment of like, if it's a really well made show, I don't really care. Uh, and you could argue, certainly in the case of the Quinzel situation, there was a purpose to that. Yeah, like there's an angle that even if they don't talk about the social acceptance of the same sex relationship what she's after something in doing yes. that. So you could argue that that's almost the villains. Honestly, the most jarring thing to me was the penguin. That was mm -hmm. like when that reveal happened, I was like, that caught me off guard. Um, yeah. But they didn't talk. I just, it was accepted that, okay, this is the penguin in this, in this time and place. So, you know, it's a choice. There's a part of me that's still with the Gordon one. I go back and forth. There's a world where I could have seen some interesting storytelling around that particular character within that particular role um especially then with his daughter working also on sort of on the side of the law it would have changed the course of a lot of the storytelling it you Certainly can argue would did, bog it them would down been, yeah. but there's a world where that could have been interesting um, Certainly, that's why we posed the question prior to the show coming out but Again, my analogy towards Bridgerton is that they, you know, this is commonplace and this, there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. And I, that's what the, I, for me, I that was the best part. They went to an old, that, that's a show with an older society where you probably wouldn't have seen the variety yes. <laughs> of characters that you see in that show. And they just treat it like everyone accepts it and it's cool. Yeah. So. What did you think, Brian, of the relationship between, let's call him Pennyworth. And Batman, you know what, Brian? I want to before we go. Oh, hang on, can we? Can we yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. My favorite aspect of the show, hands down, was probably, in my mind, the highest degree of difficulty going in, and this is the number one reason I will like ride for this show. I think Hamish Hamish Linklater was great. Oh yeah, I think he was great. I yeah, think yeah, he put yeah. his stamp on both Bruce and oh, yeah. Batman. He has it. Yeah. He found a voice that, like, as I said, it echoed Conroy, but it didn't copycat him. Yeah. And I thought he was the best character in the series, bar none. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. When we talk about voices, we'll talk about the last episode and the end credit scene, Brian. <laughs> Because that's a different take, which I am yeah. there for because okay, yeah. I am tired of listening. Yeah, Not that it was it's classic Joker with Mark Hamill, but I'm interested in seeing a new take. I so agree. We haven't seen what that take is yet, but um we'll get to know obviously the curiosity is there to how they introduce uh that character. So I one of the criticisms I've seen <clears throat> of the show is that Link Later actually doesn't get enough lines. And I actually I I I know why he doesn't because they're trying to build a world and I'll get back to one of the things I felt like about the first half of the season. But I think that was the hardest thing about this show to pull off was doing it without Kevin Conroy. And this guy, I thought, owned the voice. I, I liked both sides of the persona. I was very impressed. It, it to me is like it made me most excited about future seasons that they found a great Batman. Yeah, I was all in. From the original trailer for this guy, I, although we hadn't heard Bruce Wayne, and once I heard it, I was like, okay. To me, listening to him and and do, I was I was in that world. I was I was just paying attention 
very carefully to what was being said when he spoke and I, when everybody else spoke because they everybody else did a great job job in in, in, in the performances for each of the mm -hmm. characters that they were uh, cast to do. But Brian, would you say that this Batman world is a more, certainly a more mature riff off the Adam West one? Or oh, the you, Adam West world? Yeah, but in terms of a serious take. Or you took the, or, or they took remnants of that world because you saw King Tut. You with that, a lot of these things reminded me of uh, of that world. Interesting, uh, because of the the different takes, the telephone number that he has that nobody knew he had. Oh, okay, um, interesting. I didn't. That's not where I went. That's funny. I I I thought it was more. It's funny, even though Gotham is supposed to be New York, I actually thought it was more riffing on like Capone and Chicago and sort of prohibition era organized crime like that that's what i got the feel of more was mm -hmm. like that the untouchables sort of um era. that's kind of and, and that goes to my point about i thought the first half of the season was kind of uneven but if you had just asked me if we had done a show after just episode five like one through five i would have said it's a vibes show like this yeah. is entirely a vibes show like the whole thing about these episodes is to just like set mood and like these characters it's like it is loosely connected, but a lot of it is just trying to put the playing field together and give you a sort of a almost like a, you know, a platter of, uh, of different foods, you know, and like, here, let's give you a, a sampling of this villain and this character. We'll Fusion of sorts. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I feel like it very much was just like feel. Everything is feel. And then I felt like in the second half of the season, it was more kinetic. It was more yeah. impulsive. There was more, yeah. especially when the Harvey Dent storyline starts oh, to yeah. really move to the center. I feel like the almost series almost takes Almost similarly off. to Batman the Animated Series too, right? When, when yeah, I think, that's, stuff, I think yeah. that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, so I think it's it's almost like two seasons in one to me. But I didn't, it's funny, I didn't get the Adam West. I didn't get well, the Adam West vibe. In terms of the, when I saw King Tut, um, just little little hints of it when Batman is in a in a situation where he has to get out and get out of it. Um, the King Tut certainly took me back there. When that, I think it was a third episode or fourth episode where Harley Quinzel is sort of uh, um, messing with their minds, so to speak, and having them do things that they wouldn't obviously do. And the dude dressed in King Tut, he was a he was a villain in the Adam West show. Hmm, fair. Um, but I like how Brian. You don't go to a computer. You go to a, 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 a you know a map. That's yeah. where you go to. Oh yeah, you know, that's it, fun. Yeah, that's that, fun. yeah, it's that fun is. To have to do the work. <laughs> exactly. You know, he's, breaking, he's breaking into file cabinets, not into computers. You know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, exactly. You know, it's, it's it is it is nice to see that old. As I said, yeah, it, it reminded me more of that. It was like the Sam Spade Maltese Falcon. Like that's that's kind of the yeah. vibe I think that. And it felt more real. I will say, like, I think you, the animated series, there was a fantastical element always present, um, even in the way, like, Batman moved, he was drawn. Mm -hmm. This one felt like they were, other than the episode with the ghost, felt like they were grounding mm -hmm. most of the characters in a more sort of tactile way, including Batman. Yeah. Uh, which I liked. Like I yeah. like kind of the car, the way the car chases were shot. It felt more cinematic um, yes. and sort of like I like the camera angles that they use. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. Like they, it they, felt something like more like you'd see like Michael Mann or you know using it in, in in Heat than it would be like you know cartoonish. Yeah. Um, so that I think is is, is they were su largely successful in. So, but again, Batman and Pennyworth, their relationship, Brian. Yeah. I would say. Alfred became a tool that night when Bruce Wayne woke him up and told him, you're going to help me. Do that was a they... great scene, by the way. What? That was, that a was an great amazing scene. scene. Like, talk about, like, mining something we've seen a billion times, right? The kid with parents killed in front of him and then being like, you know what would be cool? <laughs> Let's write the scene where the kid basically swears revenge on all these people and tells his butler slash father figure, this is how it's going to be. That was really cool. 
Yeah, that was that was intense. And it already establishes the sort of relationship that Batman has with him in the future. There was this one episode or scene. It was actually the, I think the third one with Harley Quinzel was a Harley Quinzel, uh, Dr. Quinzel episode. And it was that, that, it was when that day, it was that episode where he lost it and punched that dude out for saying what he said about wearing pearls at crime alley, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I I guess it was towards the end of the episode and Alfred sort of talks to him, I guess, to sort of probe a little bit more. I don't know. And Batman is drinking coffee and and, and he says, your coffee's cold. <laughs> so sort of the change, the subject sort of. And then, Brian, something I had never seen before, Brian, or never heard before. Batman getting super upset with Alfred. Yep. That was dope to me, Brian. He 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 straight up like treated him like I've seen people treated before. <laughs> so it was interesting to me, Brian. What did you think of that? Well, to the point about one of the reasons I like the Hamish Linklater take is he's angrier. Like the scene with the kid ties through to when he's in the field. He gets dangerously close to crossing the line. Like, and, mm-hmm. and like with this character, like, yeah, you kind of know it's Batman. He'll find his morality in the end. But like, you know, he picks up a gun. And he's like, he's thinking about shooting. But like, yeah. there's no question. And so I, I like that they basically added what I think is unquestionably like would be part of this person's psyche yeah. in, in doing this and having gone through this. Like they would have that struggle in the moment of, yeah becoming unhinged and becoming yeah. incredibly angry and treading much closer to being the villain. Oh um, yeah. Like a lot of these fil- a lot of the times we take on Batman they want you to think he can get there but then they don't actually do the work to where you ever believe. Like Pattinson yeah, probably believe, was yeah. closest to that. Mm-hmm. Um but this guy like when there's a couple of scenes where you're like oh he might he might do it. Like he might actually like drop one of these guys to their death, you know and and you know, and like, because he's he's young enough in his career that maybe he would do that. And then, you know, I, so I think it worked. Do it in a sense. Remember those two guys were shooting? This was the last episode. Two guys were shooting him. He wrote, like, he he tosses himself in between them and they shoot each other. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if they're dead or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. I The relationship with Alfred is fine. I I stand by what I said. I still don't love how he's drawn. Uh, It's not my favorite rendition physically of the character. But but, would you say a lot of other characters reminded you of Alfred than he did? Yeah. I mean, obviously, they introduce a Lucius Fox character into this, too, uh, which is very different than sort of the Morgan Freeman sort of elderly take. And so I think Lucius probably gets a little bit of the Alfred piece. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. Who do who did you have in mind as sort of like the there was this Alfred. one dude that opened the door for Barbara in an episode because uh, she was looking for someone and the dude just seemed like an Alfred type hmm. character in terms of the way he was drawn, but like the the point about like you know he's he's out, he's out of shape he's he's chubby like. In the episode, I think that's where the point, the Brian. Yeah, I think I, that's the point to make him to make us feel sorry for him, sort of. A little bit. I, I mean, maybe that was what they were going for. But then that moment where Batman is holding him, saying, "I can't do this without you." There's yeah. a part of me that's like, "Well, you got to help him. You got to help him maximize his lifespan." Then, if yeah, that's man. The case, yeah, you know? yeah, put him but, on a treadmill. Do something. So, but I did like. There's some of the dialogue where Alfred is still his conscience, right? Like when they're discussing the aftermath of Dent and Alfred rightly points out kind of like you, you found your way back yeah. to your humanity and Harvey wasn't able to do that. Like that's sort of vintage Alfred where he's yeah, able yeah, to be, yeah. the, you know, kind of the, the voice on his shoulder saying, you know, to see the world properly, I guess. Yeah. Is what he's doing in the supporting cast. Okay. Because there's a lot. Mm-hmm. You said some of them don't make it out of the season. Some do. Flass and Book are one of my favorite ones. So I was going to say, just like, you don't have to give like, a, if you have a number one, that's great. But like, just like a top tier of like, who are the ones you were, that you thought were brought to life in the best way? 
Flash and Bullock were definitely entertaining. Uh, Agreed. Jim Gordon didn't really have much to do, Brian. I think he's the bottom. I think he's the biggest disappointment of the show in terms of the character. I think he, I think Barbara gets much more to do than he does. And Montoya. Yep. Uh, now, obviously, they can improve that in season two, but that would be yes. my note to them: is that you you get a a tease of the dynamic between Batman and Gordon when they cross paths, but they don't really go down that. They don't really dig into that. Not yet. yet. Yes. I thought the Diedrich Bader take on Harvey Dent is awesome. Oh yeah, I didn't even I think, think of... it's incredible. Like yes. I think it's like as good as you're gonna see and the way yes. he spins the duality of the personality, I think is amazing. And spoiler alert, I'm really kinda bummed. That's <laughs> all I'm gonna say about that. Bummed. Yeah, it's like why? Like, why him? I yeah. get the other dude. Yeah, like I'm like I'm, I'm like looking around, and be like, can we get Raz Al Ghul in here to like take his body and bring him back? Because that, that was such a good run. Like when he got on screen, and then you know it leads to the acid attack and like him turning and like, but the way he flipped from Harvey to Two Face, I was like, that's what I want. Yeah. If they if they do it again, like you know, if they do it again in live action. That's what I want. I want someone who can do that. Um, yeah, that can go from zero to one hundred, and you're like, "Oh, what just happened?" Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying. True schizophrenic, like true, like help yeah. me on the one hand and like curse you on the other. Yeah. Like, thought it was amazing. Love, love the take. Um, you reminded me of Billy Zane. Billy Zane. <laughs> <laughs> does Billy Zane say, wait, wait. Does Billy Zane have a good side though? He's he's yeah. a, he's a douche in I think every single role. Play it. Every role. Yeah, yeah. Like a yeah. Titanic, he's like a comic. Oh movie. yeah, I'm like the evil guy. That's what he reminded me of that guy. <laughs> that guy. But um, yeah. Harvey Dent, I think, was the most. I think he's number one. I that um, was outside of Batman. Outside of Batman, yeah, and is, the supporting character, he's number yeah, one. I think yeah. that was a a an epic take, and it's you know too too short. I love Christina Ricci as Catwoman. I, I thought it was great. I it, that was obviously a setup for the future. Yeah, that they just put into the first half of the season as like let's let's just kind of do this. Yeah, but I was like, she's really good. Like I I can't wait till they bring her back. Yeah, it was a funny episode. It yeah, was a funny episode. Uh. I didn't quite like. I mean, I get it. What she was, she she was just. A, she's a little bit out there in terms of what she wants and how, mm. and how she goes about getting it. Yeah. Uh, I hope it. I hope she uh, evolves from that a little bit. I hope the car evolves. That was certainly that was that was, that was probably the. That yeah. was a reach. That's your Adam yeah. West right yeah, there. That, yeah, that was yeah. a little bit yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> Quinzel, did you like it or not? Did it work for yeah, you? Yeah, it did. Yeah. I mean, I like, Brian, the first sex. I like the Clayface joint. Yeah, absolutely. That, that episode was dope. Yeah. But I like the fresh takes they did on all, all these guys, even though they're perhaps not all of them are meant to stay or stay around for some time, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I got the sense there might have even been a little bit of experimentation in the writer's room. Like, I, Jim Craddock didn't really work for me. I thought mm -hmm. the ghost was a, that one. I think they were yeah. a little far away from the vibe of the show. And I just I was hoping for some Scooby-Doo type solving. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or it wasn't for those that meddling Batman. <laughs> But so that oh. one didn't get there for me. Um, yeah, like I said, this yeah. show might have also been trying to do that deliberately to say like, "Hey, let's try one of these. Let's try one of these, and then you know we'll we'll settle on on what we have." You know, like Penguin, I would see more of. Like, I would I would definitely like. I'm fine with like. Let's explore that. Let's go with that. Um, yeah. Again, it's just felt like you're giving you a little bit of a taste here and there of a couple of things. But but yeah, on the whole, I thought it was a pretty good gallery of rogues. And you're right. Yeah. In some ways. When they did the tease at the end, I was the when it first started, I was like, uh oh, not another one of these. Yeah, yeah. But then maybe they found something. They're playing around, and that's fine, Brian, because we're used to seeing or hearing a specific voice or kind of voice. Um, they've tried with the Joker uh different takes on some animated series, but they all fall within the Mark Hamill world uh, in terms of performance and, and I guess inspiration. 
this one right i don't know yet but it is it's it already when you saw it it sounded way different and perhaps even much more sinister again the curiosity to to know what sort of joker this will be based on how they've taken these other characters and sort of done little different things to it i'm interested in, and curious to see what they've done to this character and how this character uh uh talks with 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 Batman how he interacts with Batman is going to be interesting to see. Well the the thing that struck the thing the first thing that came to my mind was this Joker seems designed to be a a complicated foil for our angrier darker Batman. Yeah. Like they seem like this guy seems pretty hard. Um like like he he's not leading with the laugh. Like the laugh yeah. is a function of something else but yeah yeah it, it felt very much more gangster and much more you know sort of like he's starting from a place of pure evil and maybe there is sort of a dark humor that comes out of that but um even the thing about even the experiment of how he's making the people laugh there wasn't really any goofiness to that and so if we've already seen that this batman can be triggered to tread dangerously close to the line. This guy seems like a perfect way to kind of push him. My hope is that I get a much more, not dramatic, but a much more on the edge of your seat sort of interesting take with the Joker and not the goofiness that, you know, you, you know that the Joker's crazy in the Batman the Animated Series. He just does stuff, just do stuff. He has his, yeah. he wants some, for the, for the most part, pretty much mess with Batman. This one, I don't know what his 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 uh, motto is or whatever, but we'll get to find that out in the next, uh, hopefully, in the next season of the Cape Crusader. But well, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. yeah, and I would say like this. So it's like it's a tiny, it's a tiny thing, but when you, the only laughing you hear is from the victim. Yeah. Right. So this Joker has i don't know, like if you started to install like some of the comic stuff you would say like this style of joker yeah i could see him beating robin to death with a pipe the yeah. comics have sometimes tended toward true serial killer versus sort of over the top maniacal crazy boy yeah yeah and so if that's the route they're going like i'm here for it because even ledger didn't go that dark yeah he was dark but he was still chaotic he was still yes funny in a twisted way yeah like he retained that as a lead part of his personality which is legendary if they're going to eliminate that and say what if the joker was truly dark yeah and he just derives pleasure in doling out evil and torture and all that sort of stuff okay let's find out we haven't seen that so brian what sort of rating would you give give this out of five stars I would give this a strong four, tending you could talk me into a four and a half, but a strong four would be kind of where I would start. Yeah. With I would think later same. being like, it just can't go below four for me because the they got Batman right in a yeah, Batman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking four too, because I, I, I couldn't give it a five despite liking, very much enjoying the show. Uh, but I enjoyed the show for different reasons other than um, differently than I did the X-Men, differently than I did Blue-Eyed Blue Samurai. I do think I, X-Men is slightly better. Certainly. If we, yeah, if we're, if we're putting side-by-side yeah, updates yeah, yeah. of classic 90s animation, I have to give it to X-Men 97. Better, yeah. better, it's a better show, and the high points are higher. Yeah. But it came in with baggage. This one didn't. So it was hard to sort of... Uh, because this was more of an origin sort of uh, storyline. We just getting to know what this, with the X-Men, we coming from a, week, a continuation from what we saw previously. It, it's a great point. One is a true sequel. The other is more of a reset within the same universe. They are they are aiming at different things. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Cape Crusader. I know many of you were excited to see this show and it's come and everybody I'm sure who's watched it has seen it all. 
Uh, let us know in the comments section below what you guys thought. Um, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!